Welcome to Public Safety Talk Radio, the podcast for all of our heroes in public safety, including law enforcement professionals, firefighters, EMTs, corrections officers, healthcare workers, and more. The show is produced by the POCUA and is founded upon its soundness initiative. This episode is sponsored by the Finest Service Organization, a provider of line of duty death loan protection through many of our POCUA institutions. I am Ken Bader. I'm your host for Public Safety Talk Radio. And I have a special guest today, and his name is Sean Douglas. He's a soon-to-be, at least as of today, by the time you listen to this or watch this, he may already be retired, but he's a soon-to-be retired Air Force veteran. We appreciate his service and a creator of many podcasts and a great new book, which we're going to talk about. Sean, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having me, man. Hey, it's always great to talk to you. Uh, glad. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is because because either because either I'm learning something, um, right. or I'm busting your balls. So either way, True. either way, I'm having fun and getting the benefit from it. So and, and it is and it you is definitely all get about the big me. end of the stick. <laughs> all right. But uh, but for the video version, I know you're moving as we speak, man. So, you know, before we even get into the book, talk about this transition in, you know, in kind of retiring from the Air Force and what you're going to be doing from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Yeah, man. So uh, done 20 years and the, like, not quite 20 years. It's, a, it's weird how this works out. So you have a bunch of terminal leave. I got 84 days. And then the military has something called the skill bridge, brand new program called skill bridge. And what they do is you get to go out and work for another company or another trade or go to school or do something that will guarantee you employment after the service, which I think is absolutely credible because there's so many veterans that kill themselves 22 a day. We always talk about that number 22 a day, whatever. Well, a lot of them, are so pissed off at the Air Force, Marine Corps, Army, Navy, Coast Guard, whatever, that they're like, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm separating. And then they get out and they're like on their terminal leave for two months. And then they realize that, oh crap, I never set myself up. Like I don't have a job. Yeah. Like what the hell am I going to do? And then if you're like higher, higher, higher up, you know, you might be all set with retirement. You might be able to take six months off and have a six months worth of, worth of money pot just sitting there. Most people don't. And so what I'm going to do is I'm doing 60 days of skill bridge to go learn to be a truck driver so that I can learn the truck driving trade so that I can go buy my own truck and become my own owner operator and then eventually build a freight company. That's nice. what I'm going to, that's my plan. But if I hate it, then I'll just quit and do my entrepreneurial stuff, which, which is what I always do anyways. I built four businesses while serving in the military. It's kind of what I do. Yeah. Do, do you sleep? Uh, about six hours. About six hours, yeah. yeah. About <laughs> six hours. What you just mentioned is that you, not everybody is as blessed as you to have a skill bridge program. Yeah, I just right. spoke to uh, literally last week in last week's episode, spoke to one of your Air Force colleagues that you know, talked that went from the Air Force you know, to law enforcement. And yeah, mm. now that isn't always a, the best idea, you know, sometimes. Well, that's what a lot of these guys do. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, what job translates the best from military to civilian? And it'd be cops or firefighters. You know, we got firefighters in the Air Force. These guys get out and go be firefighters in the civilian world. A lot of these guys, like I'm an aircraft mechanic, mm-hmm. you know, but just because I'm an aircraft mechanic doesn't mean that I don't pick up a weapon and stand at post. You know, when you're right. deployed, you carry a weapon with you. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, one of the one of the taskings that I had, we were over at Hill Air Force Base and we were worldwide deployable as enablers. And so what we did, we were, I think we talked about this uh, in one of the previous episodes, but um, we were aircraft battle damage repair okay. so if they're putting mortars onto the base and something gets you know messed up whatever or if a jet crashes or whatever but we got to go get it we got to go assess it we got to go fix it we you know whatever well we have our own armory 
And so they were like, hey, man, we're going to, like, Afghanistan. We're like, oh, boy. So we go to the armory. We start racking weapons, start getting all the ammo. Start get, I mean, we have our own – I mean, we're a self-sustaining unit. And uh, it, was, it was called the Combat Logistics Support Squadron. And so we supported a lot of other combat um, operations and things. Sure. And they just – they called us. They were like, yo, man, things are messed up. And they called us, and we went, went and did our thing, you know. But yeah. just I'm an aircraft mechanic. Can it doesn't mean that we don't stand up, stand up and grab a weapon and, you know, do convoy duty and, and, and all that other stuff, you know? So it's, it, I mean, the jobs translate into what they translate into. Yeah. I mean, I could go work for Delta. I could go work for, you know, whatever airline or whatever airport or whatever fixing airplanes, but I just don't want to do that. You know, yeah. we, we, we've created businesses, we've created podcasts, we've created books, we've created speaking programs, products, services, like that's what, that's what I'm going to be doing you know, when I get out still, uh, but you know, I'm always looking at what is the current thing right now? They're the, um, the ATC, which is their, uh, what is it? The American, American, uh, trans associate or ATA yeah. or something like that. Anyway, um, traffic association or transportation, right. association, American transportation association or whatever, are saying that there's 60,000 jobs available for trucking and they're wow. paying bonuses like people are like i'll give you a five thousand dollar bonus if you come and work for us because mm -hmm. those trucks got to keep going but yeah they just they, they, i mean so many people are either not wanting to do it or they're over buying like amazon and all those others. like they got yeah. freight to move and we got to move quick and so they either need more drivers because they don't have any or uh like covid everybody was shopping online well, what does mm -hmm. that mean that means all the Delivery, freight needs yeah. to be moved. Yeah, yep. Ken, Kenny needs his, his almond milk. It needs to get here, you know. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, so the jobs are there, right? The market's there. That's yeah. where the money's at. And then, and then another place is lumber, right? Yeah. The lumber shortage, like all that. Like, you need to get into the lumber industry. You need to get into whatever logging company and like what, like. You know what I mean? So well, you, you know, go where the you, money's there. You go where the shortage is at. With with the with the tank top shirt, you look a little like a lumberjack today. So. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, flex for us, will you on camera? No, <laughs> but I would, I wouldn't want to break the camera. <laughs> yeah, because it's your camera. But let's get back to to the books because one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on. Um, other than to give you a hard time is <laughs> <laughs> publicly publicly. Yeah. You know, there'll be millions that see this. Um, yeah. I, I only hope, uh, but you, you, you've written books before and you got a new book coming out that, that I feel privileged to be a part of. So, so let's talk about yeah, your books and let's talk about from, from no worth to self worth. Man, your chapter is amazing. Like, I just, <laughs> See, I love your. This is why I bring them on the show to tell right? them that I did something amazing. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so the, so the B plus C plus S book, like that was, that was pretty good. Like, I like practicality. I like, okay, what do I need to do? And like, I don't like origin stories and I don't like, like when you're on a podcast, right? The first thing they say is, hey man, tell us about yourself. Like, like, who are you? What do you do? You know, well, just read the damn bio. It's in the bio. Like, what I do is in the bio. <laughs> Right. But you're going to spend t 10 or 15 minutes trying to do an origin story of the freaking guy, read his damn bio and ask him the questions. Right. And that's why I love your show. You know, you're like, you're not, you're not like, so tell us uh, how you were when you were three years old, you know, what kind of family, <laughs> you got? who gives a crap? Why is the guest here? And what's he going to share? Yeah. And you do the same thing in your book, man. You're like, I mean, you opened up, right. You opened up like it was 6.00 AM. And I was at an airport and, uh, and I may or may not have been drunk, you know? <laughs> like, you know I mean? And it was just like, wow, okay, we're going, all right, all right. Yeah. He just peels the Band-Aid off, and he's like, let's go, right? Well, unfor um, unfortunately, yeah, the, the story which folks will, will read in the book, uh, I was sober at that 6 a.m., but I, I, I wasn't 36 hours prior to that. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So, so from no worth to self-worth, such an amazing book. I knew that I wanted to do something and it all started with me and a guy, my, his name is Sean Laurie. Mm -hmm. 
He's an old army. Uh, I think he's Marines. Or maybe he's army. Anyway, he's an old uh, military buddy of mine. He was he's army. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think he's army. I actually, I actually read the book. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can never yeah, remember because yeah, I have so many veteran army. friends. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool dude, man. Super cool dude. So, so we launched his book called Veteran Mindset 2.0. Super cool book. So we formatted, edited, went through the whole rigmarole and all that stuff and launched it. Boom. Number one bestseller. Number one new release. Boom. Got it. And then we were talking and I was like, man, you really need to have a signature program with your book and you really need to have something else to back the book up. And this is like April. And he's like, man, I really thought about like talking about self-worth and I really I was like, yeah, it's kind of been done. Like just a quick Google search of self-worth books, a lot of self-esteem, a lot of self-worth, a lot of, you know, there's a couple of books that are like, you are a badass, you know, they're at Target and Walmart and you know, there's one called Unf Yourself. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I that's saw a super that one. funny book. <laughs> Unf Yourself. I was like, dang, I didn't know that could be a book. And so somehow we got to talking about what it, what it would look like to go from zero to a hundred. It like like if your life, if your if if everything that you do was zero to a hundred. Because we know what it looks like in a car, but what yeah. does it look like as an entrepreneur? What does it look like as a father, as a husband? Now a word from our sponsor, the Police Officers Credit Union Association. Coming this October 2021 is the Public Safety Business Summit in Savannah, Georgia, a program specifically created for organizations that serve first responders. What you will experience is a high level of networking and collaboration among like-minded leaders who are in the business of serving first responders. What you won't get are a series of boring lectures with no interactivity, ridiculous golf outings that are only appealing to a few attendees, or a couple of retreaded subjects that you can hear at any credit union league event that are just thrown into the curriculum. We offer an engaging agenda where attendees even help to determine the content during the actual conference based on their unique needs. If you run a business, a credit union, or a nonprofit that specifically serves first responders, then the Public Safety Business Summit is for you. For more information, go to www.policecreditunions.com or call 331-300-9889. We hope to see you in Savannah this fall. Like, what if it was zero to 100, man? Like, how would you get your, like, how does the worth come? And, and and so we were talking about that. I was like, man, that would be an amazing book. It, what, what would it be like if you could read a book at seven years old, at 12 years old, at 18 years old, you know, as a, as a kid and be like, I know what I need to do. Like I kind of have that because I don't know many parents that are talking to their 15 year old that it's like, man, here we go. You know, you got to get this grades and then you're going to go to this college and you go to this school and, da, 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 and all these jobs, you know. Some do, but I would say probably three quarters of the families in America are like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, I want to be this. Cool. We'll go do that. And you have fun with that. And we'll try to help you, but you know, we're going to plan it out. And then you've got, you know, I've got a, a couple of friends of mine that they knew what they were going to do when they were like seven and their mom and dad have been planning it out, planning it out, planning it out, study, 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 study. And that's what they're going to go into. Uh, one dude just passed the Zemcats. So now he's going to go into the medical field. Mm -hmm. but he's been doing this since he was like 10 or 12 years old or something. Right. And, uh, and I was like, man, what a cool book. Like that would be a super cool book. So then we kind of mapped it out, Sean and I, and I said, dude, we got to get other people on this. Like everybody's got a story. Like, let, let's just see what comes up. And then I posted it on, on Facebook and I was like, Hey, I want to write a book about self-worth, like no worth self-worth. It's that journey of going from no value to the value that you give. That's what I want to do. And I had a bunch of people, 15, 20 people automatically was like, yo, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And then uh, the book's out, you know, in, inside of, uh, shoot, inside of Months. a month and a half. Yeah. yeah, month and a half. We were, we were rolling. I was like, I need your chapters by this day. I need your drafts by this day. I need your bios and your headshots. And then I put the whole book together and me and my designer sat down and we says, okay, how do we want to design this book? And it was funny, man. I, I, I always... You know how they, people say, I never leave anything to chance. I always leave it to chance. I always do. Mm -hmm. Because they were like, well, are you going to rearrange the chapter? Nope. Pick what chapter you want. Just pick what you want. And everybody's like, I want this one. And, and I do what feels right. Mm -hmm. And when I trust myself, I always, it, 
it, it always works out. And I would say that when you read this book, it's such a mixture and, and yet has the same theme that it doesn't matter how you put the chapters in there, the way it's set up wasn't by design. It was like, whatever chapter you want. Like, that's what we're yeah. right. I knew I was taking chapter 12. Sean was going to take chapter one. Right. It was, it, that part was designed. Right. Yeah. I was like, Sean, you need to take chapter one. And then you're going to, you are going to tailor because of the success that we had with his book. We're going to do the same thing. Is right? that so why Sean, I didn't get what? chapter 13? Uh, there is no chapter 13. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah man from no worth to self-worth is literally a collection of stories from experts sharing from their heart about how they went from suicidal moments alcohol and addiction the lowest of the low to now becoming a person of value not be not because of society standards or by their own standards it's it's the lives that they're changing like like mm -hmm. it's from from the examples like you just look at somebody and go dude's got a lot of value society doesn't dictate to 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 any of us what type of value you have or don't have that's that's kind of like what people do they they think that they don't have any value like oh, i have nothing to give well who said that right the market's never gonna lie number one but number two if you're changing lives that person you changed decided that you have value sure so yeah man oh man this book like you read all the way through it and and it's just it's it's really good man and i invite everybody to to pick up you know a kindle or you know if you like digital if you like a paperback get a paperback it, very very bluntly this is the i i've written a couple books on my own i this is the third collaborative book i've been a part of um, and the first two to use a very technical and highly professional MBA phrase really sucked. <laughs> I mean, they sucked Hol bad. highly MBA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, the pro the process, the end product, it was just terrible. I don't, I don't even promote them. I I'm just so unenamored. Uh, or disenamored. I don't know. Remember. See, I, mean, I got an MBA. I don't even know if it's unenamored oh or disenamored. But whatever the hell it it's is. not dis. I, I promise you that. Yeah, whatever the hell it is, I don't like them. Uh, so, you know, when we went into this collaboration. I, I saw the idea. And I'm like, all right. You know, I, I, I like the idea. And I, I feel like I've got something to say. Um, and then I'm like, ah, it's a collaborative book, but it's, but it's Sean Douglas. You know, I, I know that at the very least, you know, he's going to take it seriously. You know, he's going to, he's going to put together a decent product. And I'm like, all right. And, I, and I'm like, all right, well, this, you know, yeah, you know, I'm thinking, all right. Yes, it's, well, no, I'm thinking, all right, it's going to be, it's going to be good. You know, it'll be good. It'll be good to work with Sean. Let's see, you know, who he brings in and, you know, and, and, and who we get to work with and everything. And yeah, I, you know, and, and I, and I, you know, followed your rules and I got my bio, I guess, you know, I didn't want to piss off a Sean Douglas, got my bio and my chapter and everything in, I think on time. And then I kind of yeah. uh, stepped away and let, you know, the process happen and let you work with everybody else and so forth. And I was sitting there and I, I shared you this, shared this story with you, but I haven't shared this story with, with my audience is you, you you sent the Kindle version to all of us, me and in obviously the other ten authors other yep. than yourself. Yep. And I said, all right, you know, let's let's take a look at this. Let's see what we got. And I sat there with a cigar, a a non alcoholic beverage, uh, and uh, at a fire, I think, out on my front porch, waiting for my wife to come home. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna peruse this. I didn't read it word for word, but I, I read every chapter in kind of a speed read. And I'm like, wow, this, is, this isn't just decent. This is really, really damn good. Um, there, were, there were a lot of chapters that spoke to me personally uh, about you know, how people either overcame uh, mm -hmm. or how people are, are doing something you know, really special. Yeah, you know, everybody says, oh, you're, you're making a difference. Yeah, these people are, some of these people are really making a difference. Some are just making a difference in their own lives. Uh, some are making a difference in everybody's life. And I actually should correct that because 
even somebody making a difference in their own life and sharing their story could help one other person. Mm -hmm. So some spoke to me more than, than others, but yeah, even the ones that didn't speak to me personally, I read and I thought, you know, this is going to touch somebody. Uh, and that's, that's not an overreach. That's not me selling the book uh, on, on my show. That's, it's a, it's a, it's something that is going to help everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, even, if, if you don't get anything out of my chapter, if you don't get anything out of Sean's chapter, there's another 10 chapters there where I can pretty much guarantee you that one of those chapters is going to speak to you. I and, think yours is one of the best, man. I, honestly, I was like, wow. I don't know if it was the writing or the, just the detail that's in there, or, I mean, it was very specific. It wasn't long and drawn out. It wasn't like, okay, get to the point. Like, I get it. Like, okay, like, what, like what's your deal? What's your shtick? What's your, you know, like I was hanging on every page, man. And I was like, dang, this is really good. Like, it, like that made me feel really good about everything because I know mine was going to be great. Yours was great. I knew Sean's was going to be pretty good. Uh, I, I really format and edit heavily his things to make it sound amazing. And then... Uh, I knew like two or three other people were going to be really good because this is all they do is write books. And I mm -hmm. knew, I, I just, I knew it was going to be good, but I was really kind of like, Oh man, I hope these other people like come through like, Oh man, <laughs> you know, cause it's always, it's always a crap shoot, right? You're like, oh, I don't know, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but it, you know, besides, yeah, man, it was just awesome. I, yeah, I, I appreciate that, man. It, you know, it was, it, it was difficult to write and it was difficult to put out there um, mm -hmm. at the, at the end of the day. And then I want to circle back to, to your chapter and your story, because I think it's, it's very important for public safety talk radio. At the end of the day, the reason I did it is, is twofold. Uh, one, if, if my story can help just one person, and I, I hope it helps more than one, then it was worth writing. And the other, and the other reason was, was frankly for me is that, yeah, I, I have to own you know, pun intended this new chapter of my life and I can't own it without putting the last chapter of my life out there. Right. That, yeah, I, I'm very, I, I don't expect anybody's pity or, or even empathy in saying that I'm an alcoholic. I put that out there because of more than anything else, I need to own it. Mm -hmm. And, and writing that chapter and putting it out there tells me I'm owning it. You know, nobody, if somebody reads it and then all of a sudden sees me ordering a drink at a bar, they go, wait a minute. You know, that's not you. You got to own this. Uh, and by putting it out there makes me own it. Now a word from one of the POCUA's proud business partners, OfficerPrivacy.com. OfficerPrivacy.com was founded by Pete James, a law enforcement professional with over 25 years of experience. Pete wanted to find a way to help law enforcement officers protect themselves and their families. So he formed a team to create a way to quickly identify and remove their information from certain sites. OfficerPrivacy.com is the result. This service is already offered through a select few of our POCUA organizations. As a listener of Public Safety Talk Radio, you can take advantage of a special offer from OfficerPrivacy.com. Go to OfficerPrivacy.com slash POCUA, and when you sign up, you'll get two additional bonuses. In addition to removing your personal information from the top 30 people search sites, they will give you your first two months of monitoring free. This is a value of $39.98. In addition to that, you'll receive a cell phone privacy device, a $19.99 value. This prevents data from leaving your cell phone when you use public charging stations and is a must when traveling. So go to officerprivacy.com slash POCUA today to take advantage of this offer and to protect your privacy organizations who are members of the POCUA and are interested in offering the service directly to their members, contact us at POCUA at btcinc.org. 
but you you've been obviously on life transformation radio and in your chapter and, and in a lot of different forums um you know all of your speaking gigs i'm sure you you're, you're very open in in the struggles mm-hmm. that that you've dealt with you give us a little bit of a glimpse into chapter 12 and and a little bit of of your story and your motivation to to be a part of that book i honestly think that the chapter that i wrote is probably the best thing i've ever written like i like i honestly do man uh i I like i love metaphors i love tying things together uh sun tzu the you know he wrote the art of war does it a lot right keep your friends closer and enemies closer um regard your soldiers as your children you know like there's always like this, this thing, and it could always have a great takeaway. I think that chapter 12 is going to change a life from a standpoint that I learned something as a, as a military drill instructor, and it was called from the known to unknown. It's called an attention step. You take somebody from the known to the unknown. Hmm. So when we teach drill movements, or better yet, when we teach, when we teach dorm, and we say, all right, guys, we're going to make a bed, but not just any bed. We're not making a McDonald's crushed sandwich burger. <laughs> we're going to make a five-star ass kicker burger, man. So you take the bed apart, and then you have your mattress. Mm-hmm. This is your meat. But you need things on your meat, right? So we're going to put a bed sheet on. And maybe that's mayonnaise for you, or maybe that's lettuce. I, I, kind of like, how do you like your burgers? And this is the time that the drill instructor really gets to be personable with their trainees, mm-hmm. right? We're like, what do you like? Like ketchup, sir? Like, oh, get the ketchup. And then you put the ketchup on, right? Mm-hmm. And then we need a sheet. And we need a sheet. This could be lettuce. It could be onions. It's going to be mustard, you know, and then you put another sheet on. Then you put a blanket on, and the blanket is that top bun. And that bed frame right there is the underneath. That's a bun, too. And so we're going to sandwich everything together, and we're going to get it tight, neat, and wrinkle-free, okay? We're not going to have some messy little burger like McDonald's burgers that are all smashed when it comes in the bag. Like, it's going to look <laughs> like the picture. And I want my best to look like McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Carl's Jr., Taco Bell pictures, not whatever mess you get in the bag. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, you know, <laughs> and they get it right. They get it. And then what do they look like? They're like, Hey, we're not making, you hear people in the, in the, in the baby. We're not making McDonald's burgers, tearing the bed apart, you know? And like the traders are ripping their beds apart. Like this is McDonald's burgers. This is crap, you know? And, and it's so cool. Well, I did the same thing in the book and I always wanted to be a farmer. Hmm. Always wanted to be a farmer. But the realization is when I was like 12 or 13 or 14, I was looking at tractors and like a hundred grand. Yeah. No, the combines, a hundred grand. You look at, you know, different, different farm equipment that you need and how much it actually costs yeah. to run a farm. Like it's a lot. That's why these farmers are, are millionaires, man. Multi-millionaires. You know, my, my parents live in Wisconsin yeah. and you, you see some of these guys, you know, they're dirty and they're, they've got their scrubs on or their, their overalls on and everything else. It's like, yeah, but this guy's a multi-millionaire. <laughs> yep. I don't know. I don't know what kind of net worth he has. Probably a yeah. net worth millionaire, Yeah. you know, but uh, I always wanted to be a farmer. And I just remember sitting with my grandparents in Michigan out in the country. Michigan actually, believe it or not, has a lot of farmland. Like there's a lot of farmland. Mm -hmm. And I just remember sitting out there with a bowl of, a bowl of peas and we just snap the ends off and throw the ends in a bucket and throw the other ones in the bowl and then snap the ends. And so my grandparents would actually take a real thick hook, not like a fishing, but like a real thick hook. And what they would do is they would take that hook and they would put it through the fat end and then run yarn down all the way. It wasn't string. It was like a real thick, almost like a, like a, you know, like a wire twine, you know, um, you know, something decorative you would use for like tying things up during Christmas. So like, you know, just things like that. Okay. Um, It just looks like, like hay bale stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. But they would take it, boom, put it through there and string it all the Mm -hmm. way down. And then you would hang those hooks, right. From a pole that would be put up into the garage. 
and they would leave them beans sitting there until they were hard. They were just like, they're not green anymore. They're brown. Like they're like, mm -hmm. those are bad, right? No, 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 no. And then you take those down and then you cook them. Hmm. And then, and, and that's where string beans came from. Hmm. So people are all oh, these are string beans. You're like, Oh, so they've been dried out for like a month, you know? And you would think that they went bad. They don't actually go bad. And then I was like, grandma, why do you have brown beans? Like, where do you get the brown? Like, they're not like green beans. They're like brown. Yeah. Like, how do you get them this way? I never understood. Well, when you rehydrate them and put them in oil and whatever else. Yeah, man. String beans. It's a Southern thing. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that all the time, man, every summer, every fall, you're sitting out there snapping. You're like, Oh, I can't wait to eat these, get the corn, you know? And, and, you know, my grandfather would always barbecue corn. That's how I learned how to barbecue corn. He had pumpkins and squash and like, and, and he had a 10 acre farm and he just grew whatever the kids liked. You know, he had horses and chickens and pheasants. And, and I just like, man, I would love, like, this is what I would love to do. Just be a farmer. Cause I look at like the dude doesn't go to work. And yeah, my grandfather, when I was, when I was a kid was probably what fifties. He mm -hmm. said the dude is not working. Like, like he's retired. He was in the army during the Korean war. And then he was a pharmacist, you know, like a legalized drug dealer. And they did a bunch <laughs> of other stuff, you know, but he always invested. He invested his money. Yeah. By the time he was 60, he never worked. The guy never worked. He just never worked. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is crazy. Like I, at 60 years old, I want to be like, I'm not working. I'm going to sit my, uh, sit at home and I'm going to enjoy myself. And so what he would do, believe this or not, man, I, you're not going to believe this. We went to a bird show one time. And we were looking at pheasants and he goes, oh, that's a mm -hmm. white ear. And so it's like a gray bird and it had white across like its eyes and mm -hmm. then where its ears would be called a white ear. I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, see that bird? That's a golden ear. Same thing, man. Had a nice golden head. I mean, a gold, gold. I mean, oh, what a beautiful bird. Lots of colors. Like, see those peacocks? See that, that, that. I'm like, cool. So we had a couple birds and he goes to trade them with a guy. And then the guy gives him a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to another guy, takes those birds, goes over here, trades them other, and then walks away with a stack of cash. I'm like, cool. Like, what is that? He's like, well, each bird's about $500. I'm like, huh? What? Yep. $500 a pheasant. And then what he's going to do is he's going to take these pheasants home. He's going to breed them. He's going to take those 12 eggs, right. go back to the bird show, and get $500 per those 12 eggs. $500 each egg. Now, I don't math very well. 12 times five seems like you'd be like, I don't know, like six grand, mm -hmm. you know, like $500, 12, $6,000. So those two birds that he bought for a thousand has an ROI of 6,000. I was like, what? He's like, oh yeah, man. Oh, he's birds, man. This is, this is an art. Like this is, and he explained this whole thing to me. I was like, what? So this is what this guy did for most of his olden, like adult life. You know, mm -hmm. he's like, I think mid eighties now, early eighties, mid eighties. I think my grandma passed away like three years ago. Um, he's got a Corvette collection. He's still got the farm. Like he's still, like, what? And, uh, and so in the book, you know, I write about these things that I learned, you know, my grandfather was an entrepreneur yeah. and, and he taught me, he taught me what a dollar meant. Right. He taught me that, you know, just because you're not a farmer doesn't mean that you're not planting seeds in somebody. Hmm. And that's what I wrote about was at the end I talk about, yeah. and I actually did end up becoming a farmer. You know, I planted the seeds, the harvest that grew in me because I was planting seeds, the harvest that grew in other people was being harvested. Mm -hmm. and, and whatever that looks like for you, if, if somebody invests a thousand in me, I need to plant seeds so that they, so that they reap or harvest two, three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000, right? That's kind of like you're yeah. investing in me so that I can repay it into you. Right. And, uh, and yeah, man, I think it's, man let's talk about military stuff and things that i dealt with and i really kind of glossed over it too i really my other book decisions the power to overcome self-defeating behaviors really dove deep into my story of suicide and yeah. alcohol and divorce and childhood you know trauma and abuse and like all oh, the crazy crap that i had to go through but this is kind of a glossed overview but really hitting on on those moments Right. That, yeah. that really talked about being a farmer. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And it was a great chapter. 
um every chapter was great in, in its own in its own way but it was mm-hmm. having having known your story and then reading your chapter it 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 meant a lot it spoke yeah. a lot and i think you know, tying it into public safety and and what our public safety professionals are doing out there especially our police officers yeah, a lot of them are making these transitions um, to even go back to one of our very first subjects in our conversation when you were talking about skill bridge. Yeah, a lot of these officers are saying, you know, I need to do something else. Um, and, and a lot of times it's unfortunate because we're losing some good officers out there. But yeah, I, they, they're saying I need to do something else for, for myself uh, and or my family. And they don't always have a skull bridge out there um, for them. Yeah, they don't. And I, and I think that you know, some of these folks out there that have identified themselves as as a police officer, and, and some of them even said this, and this is unfortunate, where they've said, I'm just a police officer. Um, yeah. That's not what I say. And I always correct them and say, dude, you know, you're a professional, you're a police officer, you know, that's, that's huge. But a lot of these, these guys and gals say, well, I'm just a police officer and, and don't think that they can go and do something else uh, except for maybe security or something like that. Something a lot of times like the folks from the military, they think, oh, I'll just be, I'll just be a firefighter. Oh, I'll just be uh, a police officer. It just transitions. But there are so many skills that these folks have. And I think kind of bringing it back to the book with, without rambling, which I'm known for is I, I think that a lot of these folks that are looking for a transition, yeah, we'll, we'll find some of these stories in the book. And I think that whether it's from your chapter or from even our conversation in that you know, you're going into a change uh, by diving into the defense. Like, hey, I'm retiring and I'm, I'm going to drive a truck. I'm going to start businesses. I'm going to write books. I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to continue to do some of the great things that I've already done, I think is an inspiration to some of these folks saying, you know, I, I don't have to pigeonhole myself if I am transitioning from being a public safety professional to uh, another career, another profession. Does that make any sense or did I just absolutely, go off the man. rails? No, man. Yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah. You know, same thing with the police officers, right? Could be a 19 year old kid wanting to be a police officer, does like five or six years on the force, goes to the police academy, gets a criminal justice degree. And then, I mean, you see what's going on. You know, yeah. there was just a press conference yesterday. I was laughing so hard. There was a press conference in Florida and the sheriff was like, peaceful protests? <laughs> Riot. Yeah. Peaceful protests? Riot. Like he had pictures. He had yeah. pictures of what a peaceful protest looked like and what a riot looked like. And he's like, just for the media. Peaceful protest? Riot. And he was like showing the difference in pictures. Like, do you know the difference? <laughs> like, I was like, what? <laughs> But like, all, I mean, there was an officer just the other day and like, um, shoot, where was it? I think it was in, I think it was Minneapolis or St. Louis or somewhere around like the real, like somewhere in America state. No, no, no. <laughs> the really like, cause there's that line, right. From like the yeah. East to the West, I said, right there down that line, down that Mississippi river, Mississippi, somewhere, yeah. Missouri river, whatever. Uh, cop was sitting at a red light and a guy pulled out a gun and shot the cop in the head right through the window. Right yeah. at the red light. And I'm like, really, dude? Like, dang, that's crazy. And a lot of cops are like, yeah, F this, man. I'm out. Like, this is, this is crazy. So yeah. what do they do? What do they do next? What do they go get a nine to five at, at, at Lowe's? I mean, then again, I've never really seen a pissed off Lowe's employee. But, <laughs> I mean, they're not going to work fast food because fast food's yeah. trash. They're not going to go. I mean, you know, I, I just, I don't know, man. I think a lot of, I think that entrepreneurship and doing what yeah. you love, like, I think it's going to have a huge surge because you can see it now. Like McDonald's is offering in some places an iPhone. If you go work for them, they'll give you an iPhone. This is how much people don't want to work. This is how much, <laughs> this is how much, this is how much people don't want to work fast food. Yeah. This is how much people don't want to leave their house. Like just cause it's ridiculous. The ridiculousness of it all. 
you know, and, and the people who are responsible for public safety, the military and police and fire and, you know, health workers and like everybody that you mentioned in the beginning of the show, you know, what value are you providing? Yeah. You know, I mean, what, I mean, literally what value are you providing? And really like nobody can put a value on the life of another human or the life saving skills that you have that in the moment you saved a life from a car accident, you know, you saved a life that was maybe shot on the street, you know, and you're the most hated person in Chicago, but yet somebody got shot in Chicago and a police officer saved their life. The most hated person in Chicago and then saves their life. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know, man, I think we're at an interesting crossroads. And I think that we're gonna have a lot more talk about self-worth and self-value come, come the end of this year. Yeah. Yeah. To, to kind of close the, the loop and wrap this up and put it in a ball. Cause we, we spoke about so much stuff, um, good stuff, but so much stuff in the last 45 minutes or so. I, I think that from no worth to self-worth, I think for those folks that are transitioning to something else, uh, I, I think the message is one um, you, do do what you love and and yeah. don't don't be afraid to to take that leap. Uh, I think another message is you, is you know, if if you're truly still passionate about being a first responder, uh, whether it's you know the police officers and and the firefighters and the EMTs with this COVID ridiculousness have gone mm -hmm. through a lot too. Yeah, I, yeah. I keep hearing a phrase of you know remember why you started in the first place. Yeah. So you you, you know, that you, you you do have a ton of worth. You know, let's let's not let you know if you're a police officer let the media or certain groups tell you differently. And, and the last thing to close the loop. Uh, to go to your story, and you, you mentioned to me, I think, at a, at a conversation the other day when I asked you, you know, why did you adopt this project? And you said, I was called to do this. Yeah. And I think for, for those folks that, that may read the book that are 17, 18, 19, you know, much, much like you and your story, which is not in this particular book, but you tell it many times as you were working at America's Tire and uh, or yeah. Discount Tire or Discount whatever tire. the hell it was. And, you know, nine eleven happened. And, you know, you said, you know what? Yeah. yeah, this is this is what I'm called to do. I'm called to go into the military. And you did it. So for, for those folks, 16, 17, 18, 19, you know, maybe you're getting bullied. Maybe, maybe you're, you're, you're thinking you don't have the worth that you actually do. If you truly are called to be a public safety professional, police officer, firefighter, EMT, healthcare worker, corrections officer, 911 dispatcher, mm -hmm. um, if you really feel that you're called to do that, I'm here to tell you, and I think Sean will tell you too, you have the worth to do that. Embrace yeah, that. Man. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's an amazing feeling when you actually find something that you love, but it's even more amazing when you feel an actual pull. You feel an actual power, like there's an actual force, like there's an actual something, like you can feel it, like oh, I want to do that, and then and and you can and you're consumed by it. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I was consumed by building cars. I grab magazines, I look at you know Hot Rod Trader, or Auto Trader, and like all this stuff. We were always working on cars. Like it's just man, I got a wrench in my hand, and I'm oh man, it was it was such an amazing feeling, and I just felt called. And people, you know, I see them on the side of the road all the time, man. I see somebody on the side of the road with a hood up. I'd pull over. I'm like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. Like something's like, well, let me see. Like what's going on? And like, oh, let's see what we could do. And, you know, maybe like help them with AAA or maybe help them, you know, with whatever yeah. they needed. Right. I always did that because I always look at the opportunity like, oh, man, I could help, you know, maybe maybe just a, a dead cell on a battery. Maybe I could just give them a jump real quick. Maybe their alternator yeah. died. Maybe I can, you know, whatever. And, and, and it really gives them a little bit of peace too. Cause they're like, oh, okay, that's what's wrong. Okay. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, here's what you need to do. You need to call somebody, get a, get a tow truck, get it, you know, whatever. 
Well, I'm but, that guy. If you see if you see me on the side of the road with my hood up, I'm. I don't even know what the hell I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm like, right. triple, triple A better get here because I can't fix cars. <laughs> right. Is that, yeah. is that the engine? Is that a hose? <laughs> right. Yeah, man. And, uh, and, and so it kind of translates into the trucking, right? Like yeah. you have to be able to fix your own truck on the road. You got to be able to, to make some quick fixes and limp your truck to where you got to go. And uh, you never know. And so, when you find something that you love doing, hopefully you're getting money for it. Hopefully, ah, oh, I don't care about getting paid. Get paid. I don't give yeah. a crap. Get paid. Get <laughs> some money for it. Get paid. Yeah. But it's even more amazing to really feel called, like emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually called to do something. Like I just, I feel like, you know, I got to leave for a year to go tour the world. Like I feel called to do this. And parents are like, no, that's stupid. Like, what are you doing? Like, don't do that. Right. But kids are like, no, like I got to go, mom. I got to go to college or I got to go on a backpack trip to Ireland or some crap. Right. Like when you feel called to do something, man, that feeling is so amazing. And that's what happened with this book. When I, when, even when I said the name, you know, I was like, Oh man. And what's even more amazing is I Googled it nothing came up zero results yeah. i googled it in quotes so that that phrase would at least come up zero wow. all right from no worth to self-worth podcast zero from no worth to self-worth book zero like what all right let me go on amazon self-worth book and there's like your self-esteem un yeah. yourself and like books like, but, <laughs> but nothing like this nothing like it so what I'm glad to say is that in October, we will not only be doing a relaunch of the book because May is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, but right. October 10th is International Mental Health, Health Awareness Day. So we're going to relaunch the book and from No Worth to Self Worth podcast is going to go live on October 10th as well. Awesome. Awesome. Can I be on that podcast? You absolutely can. And you can even you can even host an episode if you want oh, to. Oh, look at that. Well, hey, you know, you've heard it here first. I'm gonna host an episode <laughs> on from no worth to self-worth. It it actually that was that was one of the many reasons, not the main reason, uh, when you kind of laid out this strategy that I was excited about it. Um but to, to wrap this up, because, you know, the military may can't come with boxes to box up your stuff anytime now. Uh yeah. Where where can people find all of your books? Not only our book, From No Worth to Self-Worth, uh, but find some of the other great books that, that you've written because it, it, it speaks to a lot of people, man. Yeah. If you go to my website at The Success Core, C-O-R-P-S, The Success Core, there'll be a tab, and I'm pretty sure it says book, and then – It'll take you to like a shopping kind of thing. And my podcast marketing guides up there. My speaker, uh, get booked to speak, uh, speaker guides up there. Decisions is up there. And then I'm going to put the no worth book up there as well. Awesome. So you'll be able to get all that. But you know, from no worth to self-worth is on Amazon. Uh, Decisions, the power to overcome self-defeating behaviors. That's on Amazon as well. And you know, I just invite you to check out my website and see what we're doing. Subscribe to this show. And subscribe to my other podcast, Create, Launch, Monetize podcast. And we're going to talk about how we create, launch, and monetize books here very, very soon. Awesome. Awesome. And for all of you ladies that are watching the video version, you know, stop looking at Sean's muscles and look above <laughs> his head where it's, see, I, I got you to flex eventually. And, and look at the successcore.com. You will see it right at the top of the screen. But Sean, buddy, it's so good to have you on the show. And as always, great having a conversation with you, man. Absolutely, man. You're a rock star. <laughs> thank you my friend i take after you uh but oh, thanks <laughs> thank thank you again and thank you to all of you who have either watched or listened to this episode of public safety talk radio and we'll be back with you next week with another great episode 
Public Safety Talk Radio is produced by the POCUA. The POCUA is a consortium of financial institutions serving law enforcement as well as other first responders and public safety professionals. To learn more about our association and to find one of our credit unions or service providers near you, go to www.policecreditunions.com. And always remember, if you aren't working with one of our POCUA credit unions, you're just banking with an institution that just so happens to serve first responders. As a public safety professional, you and your family deserve better. Find a POCUA credit union today.